Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrea Reimer. I'm here today as one of two MCs along with Councillor Elizabeth Ball. And happy International Women's Day. So on this 107th International Women's Day, we are here to celebrate the legacy of Helena Rose Gutteridge, a remarkable woman who happened to be the first female to be elected to Vancouver City Council, but her accomplishments were much greater than that. She was a, a pioneer in many respects, and I'm not going to steal the mayor's speech by telling you all those respects. Um, but as a woman uh, on City Council, I am very excited to be here today to be able to finally honor her and having her name here on the grounds at City Hall. So I'm here, as I said, with my council liaison colleague. We're both liaisons to the Women's Advisory Committee at, here at the City of Vancouver. I'd like to acknowledge uh, quite a few people who are here today as special guests. We have the Honorable Harjit Sajan, who's the Minister of National Defense. Uh, Mayor Gregor Robertson. We have Councillors Adrian Carr, Melissa DiGenova, and Hector Bremner with us today. Park Board Commissioners, we have Vice Chair Catherine Evans, Sarah Kirby Young, Michael Weeb, and Aaron Shum. And we have from the Vancouver School Board, the Chair of the School Board, Janet Fraser, Estrelita Gonzalez, and Lisa Dominato. We also have quite a few members of our Women's Advisory Committee who are present, including the Chair, Miranda Mandarino, as well as Rebecca McNeil, Rhonda Sherwood, and Eric, uh, sorry, Aaron Arnold. As well, we have members of our library board, uh, quite a few members of the BC Consular Corps. It might interest you to know that in many of their countries, today is a national paid holiday for women, idea for the MP on stage. Um, I'd also like to recognize a few special guests who have been instrumental in ensuring that Helena Gutteridge's many contributions to our city and have kept her legacy alive to their work in the community. So we have Irene Howard, Jolene Cummins, Cassandra Cordera, Ellen Woodsworth, former counselor as well, and Joey Hartman. Happy International Women's Day. It's my honor to be your co mc with my esteemed colleague, Councillor Reimer. I'd like to invite Ms. Carlene Thomas to help start our event today with a welcome and a blessing. Carlene is here on behalf of the tsleil First Nation. Carlene, please join us. Osiem Nisiaya, I Tanishpaloan, 
Quitsi, quits nala ihu e, Antha, and Stachalot, and the mana Santaya, e Siatma, Slahot Siam, and the Emeth Queth on Sachalot, Queth Slahot Siam. Hai Tsepka, Hai Tsepka, meet Sep, Quigwilum, e Pomathquium, e Sohot Mish, e Sewata Toma. My dear relatives and friends, the feelings I have inside are really good to see you and to be with you here today. In Coast Salish Protocol, it dictates I introduce myself to you with my ancestral name. I carry the name Ansachalot. Coast Salish Way also dictates I share with you who my parents are and who my grandparents are. And the most important reason for that is it informs you that I know who I am, I know where I come from, I know what my responsibilities are as a Wamuk Ta'a as a First Nations grandmother. I'm a grandmother of five. <laughs> I also said to you, I raised my hands like this in a co-sealish way, it's a welcoming. Hi, Tsepka, I'm thanking all of you. Meet Tsepwikwilam, and I'm welcoming you here to the homelands and waters of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Slewit of people. I just want to say thank you to the city and to the protocols office for reaching out and inviting me here to provide this welcome for you. It is indeed a wonderful day despite the rain to honor a woman who has done so much work for those living here and call Vancouver, British Columbia, their home. There's a lot of work to be done ahead of us. And I know with the relationships that are being building between the city and the three First Nations of the Lower Mainland, that we can go far and we will go far together. I'm thinking of my own grandmothers today. Without their persistence and their resilience, I would not be here and I would not have five beautiful grandchildren that I'm standing here thinking of while I'm welcoming you here to our homelands and waters. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the day. Hi, Chika. Hi, Carleen. Uh, next up, we're going to hear from the chair of our Women's Advisory Committee, Miranda Mandarino. Thank you, Councillor Reimer, for the introduction, and to Carleen for the blessing. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Miranda Mandarino, Chair of the City of Vancouver's Women's Advisory Committee, and my preferred pronouns are she and her. I am honoured to be here speaking as Chair of the City of Vancouver's Women's Advisory Committee in honour of International Women's Day and of Helena Gutteridge. The Women's Advisory Committee works with Council and staff on enhancing access and inclusion for all women and girls to fully participate in City services and civic life. We had a busy year working with city staff on the updated Women's Equity Strategy, which was passed earlier this year. This 10-year strategy reflects the city's vision to make Vancouver a place where all women and girls have full access to the resources provided in the city and have opportunities to fully participate in the political, economic, cultural, and social life of Vancouver. The strategy is being rolled out immediately and addresses the issues faced by women. You can learn more about the booth behind you or you can come speak to me after the speeches. For us who embark on the work fighting for women's rights, we have the opportunity to learn of the amazing women trailblazers who came before us, one of whom is Helena Gutteridge. Helena was a true pioneer, working hard for women's rights, fighting for affordable housing, pushing for equal pay for equal work, and becoming the first female councillor at the City of Vancouver. It is truly amazing to be here today to witness the naming of the new plaza in her name as a small token of gratitude for all that she has done. And while I deeply and genuinely applaud the City of Vancouver for embarking on the original gender equality strategy in 2005, the new women's equity strategy in 2018, and the public acknowledgement through place naming of a female pioneer, it would be wrong to ignore some of the painful truths we continue to live in today. We are still fighting for the same rights Helena was fighting for in the early 1900s. Equal pay for equal work, affordable housing, eliminating violence against women and girls, and ensuring institutions respect and reward the work we do. We must continue to push for progress in all of these areas. As a guest standing here today who also works and lives on unceded Coast Salish territories, I need to acknowledge the reality for our Indigenous sisters for who we must continue to push for progress to ensure their lives are valued, their knowledge is honoured, their voices are heard, and that they are respected. <laughs> the 
The same is true for our black sisters and our sisters of color. And while today is focused on women, we must also commit to standing up and making space for trans, two-spirit, and non-binary folks as well. We must work to ensure equality and equity for all women and must acknowledge all intersecting identities without leaving any marginalized group out. Sadly, research predicts we won't reach gender parity for another 200 years. International Women's Day is a time to reflect on our progress made, but to call for change and to celebrate women. I challenge each of you to push for progress every day in your own sphere of influence by the actions you take, such as questioning any lack of women's participation, challenging stereotypes, biases, and inappropriate behavior, honoring and valuing women's success and contributions. We are lucky to live in a city with a progressive council and staff, who push for a women's equity strategy, who publicly acknowledges the works of those who come before us. They are today with Helena Gutteridge and the naming of this plaza, and who ensure there are opportunities for all people to get involved. There are numerous advisory committees that allow for people to help shape the work of the city to ensure Vancouver is a livable city for all. I urge all of you to get involved. The upcoming election provides us all with another opportunity to ensure our voices are heard and we create the city we want and need. As we honor the city's first female councillor, let's work to get ourselves Vancouver's first female mayor. Please get involved and vote. We need to do more. We must accelerate our push for progress. For all the women who came before us, for all the women who are no longer with us, and for all the women who are unable to speak up, we must ensure equity for all genders, for all people everywhere. Let us be the generation who ensures we reach gender parity in less than 200 years. Let us be the generation who rights these wrongs. Thank you, and happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Miranda. Isn't she something? Believe me, she's one great chair, and we're so lucky to have had her here. It is now my pleasure to introduce Rachel Rose. Rachel is our Poet Laureate. She's just completed her three-year term as the city's Poet Laureate, and we are very honored that she's agreed to do a final reading of her poetry at today's event. Rachel. It's three years, I know, like that. Come on up, please. Thank you so much. I have to lower the mic. Um, I'm wearing sunglasses, not to be mysterious, but because I just had eye surgery, so please excuse me. Um, happy, happy International Women's Day to all of us. It's wonderful to be here, uh, my last official event as Poet Laureate, and this is a, a great way to, to close and to hear the inspiring um, speeches and blessings has been a gift. Um, we know that women are awesome, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Women do so much and give so much to make the world a better place um, and to help all of us, help humanity. Uh, but uh, globally and locally, women are in danger. Locally, we grapple with the tragedy of many missing and murdered Aboriginal women, our sisters. Globally, demographers at the United Nations estimate 117 million girls and women are missing or murdered. 117 million. These deaths often occur in private within a family setting. Society doesn't see them or mourn them, but these women and girls are gone nevertheless. All over this earth, women are at risk but also true, there are many signs of change of women fighting back to protect their daughters and themselves. This year marked the launch of Me Too, where women use social media to speak out about assault. Change is coming. We can count on that. Today is a day of celebration, both of women generally and specifically of the legacy of Helena Guterich, the first female councillor at the city of Vancouver who advocated for equal pay, for improved working conditions for women, and who generally did everything she could to make the world a better and fairer place for all of us. Um, I'm going to read two poems. I feel a little bad making you all stand in the rain to listen to poetry, but not so bad that I won't do it. Um, <laughs> So I'll read two short poems. This first one is called Fair. 
No fair, he says, when he learns that his sister got a treat and he didn't. I even it out, let them grow up a little without knowing the truth. Let them believe in fairies that collect teeth and mothers with power to ward off grief. If life were fair, I'd watch the wand of impartiality blast my neighborhood, pollute our water. Malarial mosquitoes would drift across lawns of houses once beautiful. Fathers would walk three hours to work to save the fair. Sons in my son's class would leave school to make bricks. I'd mark my name with an illiterate X, gather with other mothers to glean millet, sell oranges, share our dreams of antiviral medication. Children who sleep without crying out in hunger. A daughter who has to sell herself for loaves and fishes. But the same night in Peru, baskets of tomatoes, fragrant beans. In Bangladesh, small girls might put aside their coal sacks, feel the clank of pocket money. In rural China, eggs would gleam in the kitchen of every house, and in the cities, children would have brothers and sisters again. In Burma, the golf courses of generals would be eaten by locusts, and all the boys and girls would find shoes on their feet. In North Korea, a generation would grow three inches overnight. Sleep, darlings, in your illusions, and let me sleep in mine, that against all evidence, reason will conquer monsters. Nightmares endure only a night's length, that we will be fair to each other. In the green gardens of childhood, crickets sing. Even in the camps, song asserts itself like bubbles in porridge. I will be your cradle, your chapel, your temple, your truth and all you forget. Courage, small mysteries, who knows what will happen? Wear your sweater, your charm, your mother's song, wear your ears and eyes. Remember Lorca in the green morning before he was shot, wanted to be a heart. Thank you, I'll read one more um, short poem. This uh, is called From Another Room, and it goes out to an extraordinary uh, woman, Venerable Chang Wu, who runs the uh, Dharma Drum Mountain Buddhist Monastery in Richmond and Vancouver. From another room, my child plays her violin, drawing the bow across the rosewood heart. Music pours from her hands, spills down the hall, Today, as guests at our friend's temple for the Lunar New Year, we ate the simple food that contained no blood, no cruelty. As the gongs rang out and the lions met and bowed, we asked for an end to the suffering of all beings. Not to dwell in the room of pain, not to dwell in the rooms of mistrust, of hopelessness, from another room, my child plays her violin. The notes rise like cranes in flight, fall like gold coins, like the moon and stars in the broken waters. Thank you so much and happy International Women's Day. Thank you so much, Rachel, for the poems, but also for three years of really incredible service. We really appreciate it. Um, so one of my least favorite questions on Women's Day um, comes from men. Um, men who say, am I invited? <laughs> and my answer to them is, this is a call to action about social justice. Nobody is invited. It's a choice about whether you decide to pick up that call for action. So I'm very happy to say, did not get a single email, tweet, or Facebook message from a man today about whether or not they were invited. Um, and very happy to stand on stage with two men who didn't need an invitation to take up that call to action. So we're going to hear first from Minister Harjit Sajjan, who will speak on behalf of the federal government, and then he'll be followed by Mayor Gregor Robertson. I 
Happy International Women's Day, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, like to acknowledge that we stand on the traditional, ter ter traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples. And I uh, want to acknowledge uh, His Worship, Councillors, uh, Council Generals, and all the tra uh, trailblazers that are here with us as well. So thank you very much for allowing me uh, to be in, uh, in this wonderful setting. And it's also wonderful to be back here in Vancouver, regardless if it's raining, because it's snowing in Ottawa right now anyway. Um, and thank you everyone uh, for your uh, tremendous uh, uh, contributions that you have made. And we are, we're honoring today the contribution of the Canadian women to our society. And these are, these are women we count on in, in our families, our friends, and we count them as colleagues. Women whose participation in Canada's economic, social, and democratic life enriches our country. Women who are blazing a trail, inspiring a generation to dream big and reach their full potential. And we honor women like Helena Guthridge who refused to accept the status quo. In her fight for equality, Helena showed us that success cannot be achieved through division. She worked for the cause of diversity. She worked to build bridges between communities. And we celebrate women like Helena, including those who came after her as well. Now as the Minister of National Defense, I am grateful for the work of these trailblazers. Now many of whom served in the defense of Canada. And I think of one uh, woman, uh, like Vancouver's own, Elisa uh, McGill, who actually designed aircraft during World War II. So men may have flown the aircraft, but women actually designed them. And Elsie helped make Canada a leader in aeronautic, uh, aeronautic design and directed the production of thousands of planes during the war. Now, despite Elsie's status, uh, status as one of the world's leading engineers, much of her time went into the cause of women's rights. And as a society, we have made progress since then. But we have still uh, uh, not broken uh, 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 down all the barriers that we need to break down to create gender equality. And last year, I was proud to host the United Nations Peacekeeping Defense Ministerial here in Vancouver. And it was an opportunity for Canada to show our leadership in advancing gender equality and women's empowerment, both here and abroad. And at that conference, I was proud to join the Prime Minister in announcing the ELSI Initiative, and named after Elsie McGill, who designed all those aircraft. And this initiative was adopted to recognize that women are integral, are integral towards achieving peace around the world. Because we know the greater participation of women in conflict helps reduce conflict. Now our aim is to double the amount of women deployed on United Nations peacekeeping operations by 2020. And this goal builds off the work of the women like, uh, women like Elsie McGill and Helena Guthridge who showed us that we cannot be at our best when 50% of the population is left behind or don't get the same opportunity. We need to continue champion uh, and champion gender equality. We need to demand a culture of respect in our workplaces and we need to make sure that the accomplishments of Elsie and Helena are never forgotten. And we must all work together to advance gender equality and create a future that our daughters and our sons that is respectful to, so that we create a respectful inclusive for all genders. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm a proud dad of two kids, a daughter and a son. I want to make sure that my daughter is confident, but I want to make sure that my son also understands the importance of gender equality. And I know that we are doing this here in Vancouver, and I'm very proud to be here as a Vancouverite as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Minister Sajan. And uh, first, uh, big thanks to uh, and, uh, our a great day to acknowledge a Vancouverite who was, uh, has been a long time coming in getting this level of recognition. As a city, uh, we have struggled, as have communities around the world, to raise women to equal uh, status. And it's a big challenge that is not over with. We've heard very so great words from Miranda on behalf of the Women's Advisory Committee. I think a very powerful speech that captured a lot of the, the important issues that we're grappling with in the day. Uh, and today, it is not only about honoring Helena Rose Gutteridge and her struggle for justice and equality, but it's about setting our attention going forward because her work, unfortunately, is continuing, still has a long ways to go. And we see that around the world. And I want to just give a shout out to 
all the women, all the men, all the people who have stood up against harassment and assault, the brutality, who have thrown the doors open on the systemic uh, discrimination and, uh, and fear and loathing that's, that has plagued women around the world for far too long, too many generations. And there are many women speaking out courageously to break down these barriers, to call people to account for, uh, for their actions. And I, I raise my hands for that courage and, and their voices being raised. We need to support them. And no doubt it was even more difficult in Helena's day. And, and in her day, um, we go back to when she organized the women's, BC Women's Suffrage League in 1913. And in 1917, eligible women uh, got the right to vote in BC. So in uh, those four years, she had a, a tremendous role to play in getting vote for, uh, for eligible women. It was not all. There was still uh, racism and discrimination affecting people of different cultures. It was 20 years later, in 1937, when she was elected to council. So it, we're talking about decades passing in her lifetime of making these important gains, but, uh, but it took a long time and a lot of struggle. And no doubt she had many, many friends and allies, uh, sisters and brothers who helped her cause, who also were instrumental in making those good changes. Last year, uh, last spring, Parks Canada honored her as a National Historic Person. And we have a plaque on the third floor, just outside the council chamber, that uh, that tells a story about Helena Rose Gutteridge. Uh, it, it's one place where we we started to acknowledge her great uh, positive impact on our city and our country and the world. Uh, today, we take a, a much more significant step forward in naming this plaza and making sure here on the outside, uh, on the on the People's Plaza, uh, we acknowledge her leadership. We unanimously voted a city council back in November, a few months ago, to name this plaza after Helena. After Helena. And thanks to my uh, city council and fellow members of council who uh, have taken that initiative. We also approved the women's equity strategy for the next decade, the 10 years ahead, which had enormous work from many women who are here, uh, men as well, city staff, uh, the leadership of our women's advisory committee and our council. It, it speaks volumes to how far we're, we've come. But we acknowledge in that women's equity strategy there's a long ways to go and a lot more work to do on pay equity, on creating opportunities for women in leadership, on making sure there's equal representation uh, throughout our organization and we want to see that throughout the city and across the land. I want to give uh, thanks to our Prime Minister and Premier for their leadership as well. In these recent years they've made very important uh, decisions and actions on behalf of uh, equality. And that needs to be recognized. I think it's noticed around the world and has, uh, has definitely shown a positive light on Canada and BC as stepping up uh, and, and taking leadership on this. So through the minister uh, to his colleagues, thank you for your leadership on behalf of our country on the international stage. The World Economic Forum's uh, 2017 global gender gap, though, is, as was pointed out earlier by Miranda, it's, it's about 200 years before we close the gender gap at the pace that we're going right now. And that is absolutely unacceptable. I think in this, uh, in this space, we acknowledge we can do it a lot faster than that. We're on a much, a much quicker trajectory here in Vancouver, and we can quicken our pace. I don't think there's any doubt that we can do that if we continue to step up and push harder for this. Hashtag press for progress. That is this year's theme for International uh, Women's Day. And uh, pressing for progress is what we need to continue doing. So we have uh, a game plan in place approved here at the city that we need to follow through on. And uh, that really reflects Vancouver as a place where women have full access to the resources, the opportunities to fully participate in the political, economic, cultural, and social life here in Vancouver. So let's keep pushing for progress. I challenge uh, my fellow men, the boys, the brothers, fathers, uncles, all of us need to step up and speak up and make sure we're doing everything we possibly can to fight for equality for our sisters, our mothers, our grandmothers, our daughters, our aunts. We need to stand all in this together. So uh, with that, I'm, I'm going to have a little departure here from our usual. We're going to have a few people here read the clauses the whereases of our proclamation for International Women's Day. And we are going to start. Everybody hear this okay? Sound man? Do we need the scrambling of the soundboard? We can do it here from the microphone. 
we start? Why don't we start with Miranda? Whereas International Women's Day is celebrated around the world by people who believe in gender equity and who seek to improve the lives of all women and girls through legal, cultural, and social change. Today, on the 107th International Women's Day, we celebrate and encourage bold actions that support the 2018 International Women's Day theme, Press for Progress. And whereas this International Women's Day, the City of Vancouver is opening the new Helena Goodrich Plaza at City Hall in honor of a woman who pressed for progress. As the first woman elected to City Council, as a feminist and trade unionist, and as a pioneer in supporting social housing and opposing discrimination against Asian Canadians. And whereas events are being held across Vancouver to celebrate the contributions that women from diverse communities make to our city, including as workers, artists, entrepreneurs, caregivers, activists, educators, volunteers, and leaders. And whereas, globally and in Canada, women experience high levels of sexual violence and face many forms of discrimination across their intersecting identities, affecting their economy economic security, job opportunities, health, education, and reproductive rights. And whereas the City of Vancouver remains committed to promoting fairness and equity and working to end systems which perpetuate gender inequity, discrimination, and violence against women. Now, therefore, I, Gregor Robertson, the Mayor of the City of Vancouver, on behalf of our city, do hereby proclaim Thursday, March the 8th, 2018, as International Women's Day in the City of Vancouver. Thank you. We are going to shift over and unveil the big plaque here. It's going to be a little wet. We're going to be fat. We need more women named uh, on the streets, uh, on the plazas, and the public spaces here in Vancouver, and that's a big priority going forward. Did the city overestimate the number of empty houses in Vancouver? Did we overestimate? Yeah, the number of empty homes in Vancouver. Well, at this point, it's uh, we're still in the process.